Tesla Model Y versus the Jaguar I-Pace. Which electric SUV is the better option? I'm Jonathan Stewart, and welcome to Cleaner Watt. Recently, Tesla started delivering their more affordably priced SUV, the Model Y. The Model Y is based off their incredibly popular Model 3 sedan, and this SUV is going to sell really well. Late in 2018, Jaguar started delivering their first built-from-the-ground-up electric SUV called the I-Pace. Both of these SUVs offer great styling and performance, but which one has the upper hand? Let's examine some key metrics and find out, starting with the purchase cost. Currently, the Model Y is available in two variants. You have your choice of either the long-range all-wheel drive model or the performance all-wheel drive model. Later next year, Tesla will roll out a standard range model starting somewhere around $39,000. The Jaguar I-Pace comes in three trim levels. You can choose from the S trim level, the SE trim level, or the HSE trim levels. For this purchase cost comparison, we're going to use the long range Model Y and compare that to the base model of the I-Pace S trim. So if you take a look at the purchase price of these vehicles with the delivery fee added, you'll see there that the Jaguar I-Pace costs just over $16,000 more without any features being added. So with nothing added to the I-Pace, you'll see there's already over a $16,000 difference. But when you actually dive into these two vehicles and compare apples to apples, you actually have to add some of the features that come standard on the Model Y to the I-Pace's cost. If you want to add a power lift gate to the I-Pace that costs an extra $400, to get similar driver's assist features on the I-Pace that comes standard with the Model Y that costs an extra $3,000, if you would like heated seats that's an extra $1,000 in the I-Pace, to get fog lights and folding mirrors, that's an extra $460. If you want the daytime running LED lights, that costs an extra $850. And if you'd like to upgrade to premium audio, that'll cost you an additional $450. If you add all this up, this comes out to an additional $6,160 added to the purchase price of the iPace if you compare it apples to apples. So now you see the purchase costs adjusted for an apples to apples comparison. There is well over a $22,000 difference between the two vehicles and the monthly payment would be almost $400 more expensive each month. So the iPace is definitely quite a bit more expensive, but is it worth it? Now I would like to take a look at both the interior and exterior measurements and see which one offers more room. So if you compare the exterior dimensions of the Model Y to the I-Pace, you'll see there that the Model Y is almost three inches longer and is almost two and a half inches higher. The wheelbase of the Model Y is though almost four inches less. The big difference comes in the ground clearance. The I-Pace has a ground clearance of 7.5 inches up to 11 inches on its highest setting, whereas the Model Y has a ground clearance of around 6.6 .6 inches. If you look at the most important measurements, which in my opinion are the interior measurements because that measures how much room you have for cargo and how comfortably you'll be able to fit into this vehicle, you'll see there when it comes to headroom that the front headroom of the Model Y is a little over one inches more. The rear headroom is about 1.3 inches less, but what's really important is the rear legroom on the Model Y is considerably longer than you have with the I-Pace. The Model Y has somewhere around 5.5 inches more legroom and just under 1 inches more legroom in the front seats. When comparing the shoulder room between the two vehicles, you'll see there that the Model Y has slightly less shoulder room than the I-Pace. If you fold down the back row of these hatchback SUVs, you'll see there that the I-Pace offers just under 52 cubic feet of cargo space. The Model Y, however, has 68 cubic feet of cargo space. So the Model Y offers more storage and more legroom, but what about the performance of the vehicle? As I mentioned before, the Model Y is currently available in two variants, the long range all wheel drive and the performance all wheel drive models, and they have slightly different specs. The I-Pace is available in three different models as mentioned, but all three models had the same performance specs. The I-Pace is able to go up to 124 miles per hour and zero to 60 in 4.5 seconds. Whereas the performance Model Y is able to go up to 145 miles per hour and go zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds. 
The long range all wheel drive Model Y can go 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds and travel up to 135 miles per hour. So the Model Y performance clearly offers more performance than any of the top trim I-PACEs offer. Now let's talk about two of maybe the most important metrics of an electric vehicle, and that is the range and efficiency. With 19-inch tires on the Tesla Model Y, you should be able to get somewhere around 315 miles per charge, according to the EPA. Whereas according to the EPA, the Jaguar I-PACE will only get up to about 234 miles of range. There's quite a big difference in those numbers, and these numbers get increasingly different as you examine the battery size and determine the efficiency of these vehicles. According to fueleconomy.gov, the Model Y has a miles per gallon equivalent of somewhere around 121, and the Jaguar I-PACE mile per gallon equivalent is somewhere around 76. While the miles per gallon equivalent could be helpful in some circumstances, I find it more important to actually determine the watt hours per mile and the miles that can be driven per kilowatt hour. This is how you really determine the efficiency of an electric vehicle. So both variants of the Model Y come with a 74 kilowatt hour battery, whereas the I-PACE has a 90 kilowatt hour battery. Tesla is able to achieve quite a bit more EPA rated range with a smaller battery. They do this by having less energy consumption per mile. As you can see, the Tesla Model Y long range has a consumption of around 234 watt hours per mile, and it can travel 4.27 miles per kilowatt hour of battery capacity. Whereas the Jaguar I-PACE consumes somewhere around 385 watt hours per mile and can only go 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour. The Model Y uses 39% less energy per mile, and if Jaguar wanted the I-PACE to have the same EPA rated range as the Model Y, they would need to increase their battery pack to over 120 kilowatt hours. So the Model Y is considerably more efficient and it will cost you less per mile to drive when it comes down to energy costs. Next, let's talk about charging speed. When it comes to charging speed, besides the speed of the actual charger itself, there are two big factors that determine how fast your car will charge. The first is how efficient the vehicle is, and the second is the maximum charge rate that your vehicle can accept. Since the Model Y is able to travel quite a bit further per kilowatt hour, it is able to gain more miles of range in less time. On top of this, the Model Y has a charge rate of up to 250 kilowatts, whereas the I-PACE has a charge rate of only up to 100 kilowatts. To put these stats into real-world examples, if you were to connect the Model Y to a fast charger, you would be able to gain 158 miles of range in 15 minutes, whereas the I-PACE would only be able to gain around 62 miles in that same 15 minutes. Bottom line, on a trip, you'll spend quite a bit less time charging your Model Y than you will your Jaguar I-PACE. On top of all this, the Tesla Model Y has access to Tesla's amazing supercharging network, which makes charging both easy, fast, and convenient. The Jaguar I-PACE has to rely on other charging networks that are not quite as well developed yet. Now let's talk about another important factor, and that is the warranty of the vehicles. Both Jaguar and Tesla both have very similar battery warranties. Both companies guarantee that their batteries will maintain at least 70% of the capacity in 8 years, in 100,000 miles for the I-PACE, and 8 years in 120,000 miles for the Model Y Long Range and the Model Y Performance. The powertrain of the Model Y is guaranteed up to 8 years, 120,000 miles, whereas the I-PACE powertrain is only guaranteed for 5 years and 60,000 miles. If you look at the comprehensive warranty for the entire vehicle, the Model Y has a warranty of 4 years, 50,000 miles, and the I-PACE has a warranty of 5 years and 60,000 miles. Now the last thing I'd like to talk about is autonomy. The future of transportation is not only electric, but I believe it will be autonomous. In the coming years, I believe Tesla will reach full autonomy and we will see more autonomous vehicles on our roads. Every Tesla Model Y that is sold today has all the hardware necessary for self-driving. It has eight cameras, a front-facing radar system, 
12 ultrasonic sensors, GPS and digital maps, and a Tesla designed full self-driving computer. Whether or not you pay for the full self-driving package, you have the option to do so in the future. While the Jaguar I-PACE does have some driver's assist features that can be added for $3,000, their vehicles are not actually designed to be full self-driving autonomous vehicles. Waymo has instead partnered with Jaguar and they are using the I-PACE as some of their test fleet for their autonomous vehicles. In order to do this, they have added a number of radar and LIDAR sensors to the system, adding probably somewhere around $100,000 of cost to the vehicle to make it a full self-driving vehicle. Tesla has designed the Model Y, like their other vehicles, to have all this hardware built in but not be noticeable. So if you look at a comparison of these two vehicles, you'll see there that the Tesla Model Y has the lowest cost of ownership, it has more standard features, it has more room for your passengers and cargo, it has greater performance, it has much better range and efficiency, the charging speed is much better, and in my opinion, it has a better warranty because the most expensive component of the car are guaranteed for a longer period of time. So based on these key metrics, Tesla wins all seven, and in my opinion, and based on these metrics, the Tesla Model Y is a much better vehicle and a much better option for most people. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something as well. If you'd like to support this channel and help me create more content in the future, please consider joining the Patreon community that I've set up and you'll find a link in the description below. Also, if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, if you click the bell icon, you'll be notified when new content is published. And if you like the video, please consider clicking the like button so other people can find the video as well. Thank you so much.